You get what I'm saying, right? Yeah, how can I not? Not even fine food is enough to distract from the presence of a fine lady, eh? Oh, I'm far more interested in getting her details than ordering any dishes. Hey, how about you ask her? You do it! No, no, no. I think you should. Wait, she's coming. What can I get for you today? Uh, greetings, miss. Uh, I was just wondering uh, if you'd be willing to... Uh... What would you like to order? Uh, uh, two servings of more meat to go. Uh, good chat. Bye. Welcome. It's been a while. May I take your order? Don't welcome us as guests and greet us as old friends in the same line. It's weird. Mm-hmm. Oh, and this is? Uh, this is Miss Xinyun. Master? Huh? Huh. One does not recall ever revealing this form to you before. How were you able to ascertain one's true identity with such ease? I've trained and lived with Master for more than ten years. I would recognize you no matter what form you take. <gasps> you... Is something the matter, Master? Hardly. Hardly. One simply learned of your employment from your letter and came to check on your well-being. And check out the great food, too! Indeed. It's almost lunchtime. My apologies. I'm still on the clock and can't talk for very long. <laughs> well, if it isn't the Traveler and Paimon, are you here for Shenhe? The lunch rush isn't in yet, Shenhe. So, I've got things covered for now. Go ahead, sit down and enjoy some time with your friends. I'll let you know if things pick up. Thank you, Chef Mao. It is just as one expected. The owner of Wanmin Restaurant is indeed a most reasonable and accommodating human. Still, the work here entails dealing with quite a varied group of people. Has this been difficult for you, Shenhe? It's been manageable so far. I sometimes run into strange people, but I have figured out a way to deal with them. Seems like you've been making progress. So by... Dealing with them, you mean... First, I try to talk sense into them. If that doesn't work, I threaten them with violence. At this point, they usually decide they are in favor of a civil conversation. Oh, uh... How should Paimon put this? Oh, a sensible plan. One is gladdened to see you integrate so well into human society. And you, Master? How have you been? Simply marvelous! Though Mount Outsong has scarcely enjoyed your presence recently, one has hardly found the pleasure of one's own company to be lacking. I see. Oh, just as expected of Master. Hm. Hmm. I have missed Master quite a bit too. Even though work has been busy lately, I've already had a conversation with Chef Mao about taking some time off soon to visit Master. Oh, you did? <clears throat> Do make note of such matters in your letters in the future. There's hardly a need to keep one in suspense. Whoa, her mood shot up just like that. By the way, Master, since you are in Liyue Harbor, have you had the chance to visit Ganyu? Uh, indeed. She is similarly preoccupied with her work. There was time only to exchange a few simple pleasantries. Ganyu told us the story of Cloud Retainer's name. It was amazing. We never knew how powerful she was before. I see. 
In that case, allow me to also share a story about Master's past. Oh? Is that a problem, Master? I believe this to be a good topic of conversation. No, not a problem. One was simply caught off guard. But no matter, please, proceed. One is most curious to see how much of one's own conversational prowess you possess. Master once participated in a race against Mooncarver. After Mooncarver lost, he insisted that Master's ability to fly gave her a natural edge in such a contest. In response, Master agreed to forego flying in return for being able to use one of her devices in the race. Mooncarver accepted only to find Master with a brand new device on the day of the contest. Huh, what kind of device was it? It was a mechanical vehicle made out of iron. What was it called again? Oh, an electro-powered bicycle? Oh, you refer to the bicyclical Thunder Flash Mobile. One spent 49 days conceptualizing and crafting it. It need only be infused with adeptal energy, and it can cover thousands of miles in one day. Oh, it boggles the mind why Mooncarver ever supposed he might best me in a contest of locomotion. Though he sprinted with all his might, he could barely keep up. <sighs> Alas, the one flaw of my mechanism lay in its weakness against mountainous terrain. One was thwarted mere seconds from victory, when it was thrown off course and failed to make it across the final stretch. Truly a most unfortunate turn of events. Anyway, do go on, Shenhe. Master, that was the end of that story. Is that so? Huh. <sighs> With you gone, one has seldom felt the desire to call upon those old fossils for another contest. What is a race without spectators, after all? Have you been lonely, Master? Lonely? Huh. At one's age, entire human generations come and go in the blink of an eye. Even one's own self-directed musings can span several days and nights. Tis a most foreign sentiment. The mere mention of it is preposterous. What is the reason for that look upon your face? It's nothing. It's just... <laughs> well, Paimon gained a lot of respect for you after listening to that story of you summoning the rain and everything. But all it took was a few words out of your mouth and it's like you're back to being that illuminated bird again. I was just a little bit confused. Which one of the two is the real cloud retainer? To me, they are both master. One is the master that's widely revered by the people, while the other is the master that I respect and adore. Huh. One finds oneself exalted yet again with sweet words of praise and flattery of a most extravagant nature. You chose to exalt one with your words, yet you refuse to grace Mount Outsong with your presence for any extended period of time. One would almost question the sincerity of your estimations. This is not to say that your words paint an inaccurate picture. One has always lived by a single ideal. Eschew all action and abide by no rule. One does as one pleases and speaks as one pleases. Others may critique or praise as they see fit, yet one places little weight in such judgments. She got, like... What, two sentences of flattery from her disciple? And it's as if her ego is about to burst. Do you have any empty tables? Hey there, could we get another fish stew? I'm hearing more guests come in. I should get back to work. All right, good luck with the lunchtime rush, Shen, huh? Mm-hmm. I'll try my best. One is fond of all kinds of delicacies and delights in a multitude of flavors. The dishes here demonstrate no shortage of culinary skill. Their unique flavor profile has left one more than satisfied. In fact, 
One has been struck by quite the fit of inspiration. One has already begun to conceptualize the next generation of supreme cuisine machines. Everything's so tasty. A bit too hot at times, but still super tasty. I'm sorry, miss, but our tables are full. Shall we try somewhere else, Granny? But it smells so delightful. Can we really not eat here? My poor legs can't go on for much longer. Well, you could always check with some of the other guests and see if anyone's happy to share a table. Okay, uh, I'll ask around. Excuse me, would you mind letting us share a table with you? There are no empty tables left, so... Ah, well, Paimon doesn't mind. What about you guys? Great! <laughs> Thanks so much. My name is Shuyu, and this is my granny, Yuendai. Granny? Yep. Is there something wrong with that? No, no, Paimon's just a bit surprised. She looks so young. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people compliment Granny on her youthful looks, but she's actually much older than she appears. <sighs> Granny? Why don't you take a seat? Come on, it's not polite to stare. Huh. Have we met before? No. Tis a faded meeting, then. Please, take a seat. What would you like to eat, Granny? I can order for you. I want... braised earthworms. They always pop up out of the ground after a rainstorm. <sighs> no, no, not this again. Granny, there's no braised earthworms on the menu. Braised earthworms? Well, that sounds weird. Do people actually eat that? Right, that's what Paimon was thinking, too. Help? Oh, do you mean with Granny? Thanks, that's nice of you to offer. Granny has pretty bad dementia, so her memory's getting worse all the time. She's always saying things that sound kind of confusing. Actually, her memory's been bad ever since I was little. But it's gotten so bad lately that I even have to remind her who I am every morning. <sighs> they died young. It's just me and Granny now. Oh, um... Uh, but it's okay. Don't feel bad. Granny loves me a lot, and I love her a lot, too. Sure, it's hard at times, but you just gotta make the best of the life you've got. Wow. You're really tough for your age, kid. <laughs> You're too kind. And me? Oh, what about me? You're tough, too, Granny. Plus, you're really gentle, and you're always there for me. Yes, and it's hardly as if I forget everything. I still remember the important things. Um, uh, Wait, what was that really important thing again? Ah, I remember now. It was a dream. I had a dream where everything was dark. Someone was standing in front of me. She told me to come and find her, and that once I'd found her, I would be free. Huh? That sounds super important. But how come you've never told me about it before? It was just a dream, so I forgot about it. But I'm in a good mood now, and somehow I remembered it again. <laughs> ah, you know... I believe I've had this dream a great many times. But just how many times have I had it? Now that I do not remember. Wait, so you... Huh, you're right. Paimon almost forgot you're... the expert. In that case, do you still remember what the person in your dreams looked like, Granny? Not anymore. Although... I have a sense that she looked rather like me, but not as I am now, my younger self. <laughs> a younger version of Granny? 
This is just getting weirder and weirder. What is going on here? As one said, fate must have brought us together. You may leave this situation to me. Are you sure? Um, so, what are your names? Paimon's Paimon. Just Shen Yun is fine. Thank you all so much for offering to help. But first, I'm sorry for asking, but, um, how do you want us to pay you back? Oh, we don't need any payment for this. Uh, thank you so much! You're welcome! Um, but Miss Shenyun, what exactly can we do to help out this granny? All we have to go off is that dream! Where do we start? That is elementary. Since her dreams portray her younger self, then we shall retrace the steps of her youth. Once we have revisited those places, her memories will likely return. Hmm, sounds like a plan! So, Granny, do you remember which places you went to when you were young? Why, of course I do! The heavens above, the earth below, the wispy clouds, and the emerald mountain streams. Okay, taking that as a no. I might have an idea. Once, when I was really little, my dad told me that Granny used to be a martial artist heroine who saved loads of people from a disaster. If it's true, then maybe they wrote about it in the history books or something. A martial arts heroine? Hmm. Oh, Shinto knows tons about Liyue's chivalric traditions. If anyone knows about the heroes of the past, it's him. Let's go find him at the Feiyun Commerce Guild. Are you leaving already? But I'm still hungry. I'll go order some food, Granny. If there's nothing on the menu you especially want, I'll just get a few different things. It seems we must part ways for now. The Traveler and Paimon are bound for the Feiyun Commerce Guild, while you and I and Shuyu shall remain here and partake of their lunch. As for myself, I have matters to discuss with Streetward Rambler. Streetward Rambler? Oh, you mean Madame Ping! Precisely. Let us meet at Yujing Terrace once you are ready.